Hi everyone, I'm Zan from Fell and Fair, and today's video on medieval and fantasy costume building is going to be on accessories. All those little things that help take your costume from very plain and average to being really exceptional with all those cool little details and everything. So, welcome, thank you for joining us. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, we love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section, and the more you subscribe and watch and that sort of stuff, the more videos that we are able to make and bring these to you, and hopefully you will find them helpful. The two quick disclaimers we always give at the front of our videos are, one, um, we're not trying to make any historical claims. We're not telling you how to make an exact 9th century Norse outfit. We're just giving you general medieval and fantasy uh, advice. So just take that with a grain of salt. We love it. If you have thoughts or ideas, please put them in the comment section. We'd love to hear your ideas, too. Uh, but like I said, we're not. If you are a reenactor and you want to make a specific outfit, then there's other places where you can find that. This is for costume designers and LARPers and cosplayers and people who are just interested in medieval and fantasy costuming and how it works. Uh, so if you are, and you know, hopefully if you're a reenactor, you'll find it helpful, but we're not telling you how to do a one-to-one -one recreation here. All right, the second thing is some of these items that we have received, and we always tell you this, uh, we did receive for free. So they were given to us. Uh, we like to be very fair in our estimations and we tell you if we like a product or if we don't. Our goal with these sort of videos is to one, plant you, uh, plant some seeds of ideas and give you a little bit of inspiration as you're building your own kit or as you're designing one for a film or a stage play, something like that. And then two, we want to give you some resources to tell you where to buy them. Uh, these are where, what we would recommend. Nothing we uh, we show you here it's not something that we would spend our own hard-earned money on because we think these are all quality uh, products. So just know that. Uh, we have, all, like to have that little disclaimer, but uh, that's just the case. Anyway, welcome. So what we're talking about today is accessories. The little things, the little tidbits that add to the depth of any outfit. And if you think about it, we do this in normal everyday life today. You know, we wear rings and watches and sunglasses and carry pocket knives and cell phones and wallets and that sort of stuff. So we're really just talking about what's the medieval ruggedized version of that. Now, the big overarching thing that you have to think about is your character design. What is this character doing and what would they need and what would they uh, carry? In the same way that a businessman on Wall Street would carry and have very different things on him than a farmer out in Oklahoma. So you have to think about big picture with whatever your character is, and obviously get appropriate things that look like they would be used by that character, whether that is a noble or a peasant, etc. But these are some general ideas uh, and things that would be very common for people to carry really all throughout history, but are especially applicable in medieval and fantasy settings. So first and foremost is the thing that um, I carry every day today. I carry a pocket knife. Um, most people do, at least if you're in America. And if you're in England, I'm sorry, your overlords have told you that knives are violent and you can't have them. But here in free America, we still carry knives every day, and so so did medieval people. Um, so something like a simple knife, now this is a little bigger, this is something like a sax, um, but something even a little smaller uh, would have been used every day to cut your meat and that sort of stuff. So this is, in my opinion, the fundamental number one thing that you're going to want to carry. Now, if you're at a LARP event or something like that where you can't necessarily carry steel uh, knives around, uh, then something like one of these from Epic Armory or one of these knives from Kalamazil uh, are great options. They also are good for fighting as daggers and that sort of stuff. You can also get smaller options. This is a little uh, throwing knife from Epic Armory. So uh, this would be a very practical little detail. Everybody would always have a knife on them, uh, whether that's for, like I said, cutting food, for uh, crafting things and that sort of stuff. Super, super handy. So I always, always recommend these. Uh, this, I believe, we got off Amazon. Um, it's actually pretty good. We, we did some added some details and weathered it up some, but it's, it's not bad at all. Uh, this knife uh, we got off eBay and then made the sheath uh, separately. So uh, those are some different options. And there's, but there's a lot of options when it comes out there to medieval knives and daggers. But that is, if I had to say, you know, add one extra detail to your basic costume, that would be it. Now, if you want information on basic costume and what we consider a basic kit, we have a video on that in our fundamentals uh, uh, video and in our basic kit video, so please check those out. We also have one on cloaks and on tunics and on trousers and boots and all the other things that you really need as the essentials. These are more the add-ons. 
All right, next when it comes to, uh, to accessories, you're thinking about environmental stuff and survivability and that sort of thing. So a lot of times people are in hostile or non-permissive environments, and so they are, um, you know, they are, survival is a big issue, whether that's day to day, and then also just comfort. So things like gloves are really key. So this is a pair of little knit fingerless gloves. I really like these. I got these off a of seller uh, off Etsy years ago. Uh, these are great. They're very neutral colors. They go with lots of different outfits. Uh, I also have these larger uh, leather gloves. They're kind of more like gauntlets, and these are actually um, rose pruning uh, gauntlets is what they're called, rose pruning gloves that we then took leather stain from Tandy Leather and stained them and then used a wax finish to kind of give them a little more flexibility and, and protect them. But this is a great way, like I always wear gloves. Any outfit, any costume, I'm always wearing gloves, especially if you're outside. It just protects you from, uh, from the elements and they look cool, let's be honest. Because if you're not looking cool, why are we all doing this? Another item is hoods. Now, these can be made out of linen, cotton, all sorts of other materials, um, wax, canvas, leather. But a hood is a great little accessory. Obviously, it's worn around you know, your neck and then goes over your head. It's great for protecting against rain, depending on the material, but also just as a sunshade. It's a great way to just kind of put it over. Um, it also looks really cool. So, once again, another plus. Uh, this is the, uh, the linen uh, warrior. Uh, hood that we have uh, in our fellow fair Etsy shop. You will have uh, a link to this as well, but there's plenty of people that make these. I like ours because it's made out of linen, but there's lots of good manufacturers out there, so feel free to, uh, feel free to look around for, for those different options. Another great option is a hat. So this is a little knit cap that actually my sister made me. Isn't she a deer? Um, but yeah, so this is a little, I wear this one often with like a Rohirrim outfit. It's also great to wear almost because it's really thick, almost as a um, as a padded like helmet um, sort of uh, sort of cover or just to protect your head from the helmet it's a great uh, it's a great option my mind is blanking on what the word is for that but it's a thing these hats are great for it so something else that uh, you would have seen very prevalently in medieval times and in a lot of fantasy uh, fantasy times and cultures is especially when coinage and that sort of stuff was more uh, rare, people would show, first of all, as rank, they would show visible signs of wealth. Uh, another thing is a way to just easily carry their, their valuable property with them. They would wear different types of jewelry. So the, this is an arm ring from uh, VKNJ, uh, Viking Products, out of France. And now, I'll tell you a little thing on jewelry. There's a lot of cheap, just trashy stuff out there. I mean, I'm looking at, this is a cheap little uh, arm ring that I got. It's Chinese made. You have to expand them and close them every time to get them on your arm. And look, this one is already broken, right? So don't waste your money on the cheap five, ten dollar things. Get a nice one. Um, like I said, these are really awesome. They're designed and made in Europe, uh, made in France, actually. Um, and I'm all for uh, stealing stuff from France. So anyway, this is a. But please actually pay them. You actually have to pay them to get this stuff. Otherwise, they're not going to send it to you because that's how e-commerce works. Anyway, um, this is their uh, their arm ring. They also have pendants and rings and sort of stuff. Uh, this is the, their tear pendant. I really, really like it. Um, what I like about their stuff is they have some more modern looking stuff, but they also, a lot of their stuff looks like it could have been crafted in the medieval period. Um, it looks like a Iron Age type uh creation. So they did a really great job with those designs. Even the back, uh, they just have the tier emblem there. They don't have stuff stamped into it and that sort of stuff. So uh, I probably will switch out this little the neck lanyard just for something a little more medieval and rugged. Uh, but these are really awesome. Like I said, they did send these to us for free. Um, and there are other good companies out there. I'm not saying they're the only one that you have to buy from them, but they are a great option. I highly recommend. We found their stuff to be very durable, very high quality, and it just looks cool. Which, once again, what are we all doing if we're not trying to look badass all the time? Okay, actually, that's a little... There's other things in life. Just take note, but, but do look cool if you can. Why not? All right, uh, speaking of visible signs of wealth, another important thing to have on you is money. So having things like little coin pouches. This is just a cheap little uh, burlap coin pouch that I got off of Amazon. This is a really cool hand-tooled one from Lycos Leather uh, that he sent me a couple years ago. It's really neat. I like the little tooling and stuff. But being able to carry around your coinage, whether that's stuff that's for role play, that's a plot point in the film, that sort of stuff, that is all you know a really, really nice little details to have in 
uh, on your on your costume and in your kit. Also, coins themselves, right? So these are actually specialized uh, coins that we had made for our Weekend Warrior event and for our universe. So they're cool. They have their own little emblem. Each one has a story behind them. But this is how we do all our commerce at Weekend Warrior. So being able to carry around your money to shop at vendors and that sort of stuff is really important. And just coins can be really cool, uh, cool little details. We'll send put the link to where uh, the folks that we had designed those. Um, for you in our bio as well. So that kind of covers visible wealth and those sorts of things. Uh, some other important things, not only having little coin pouches, but having larger little bags and pouches and that sort of stuff. Uh, this is a pouch that actually I carry flint and steel and char cloth in. So obviously uh, fire and being able to produce fire is really important. They didn't just have matches back then. They didn't have electric stoves and ovens. So carrying flint and steel and tinder is really important. So having a nice little oiled leather bag for that is really nice. I don't actually have the flint and steel in here at the moment because I lost it. Tried to find it for this video, but it's buried somewhere. Anyway, larger pouches and bags are really nice too. Uh, this one's a kind of a nice medium size. So in here I can carry just about everything I need. My coin pouch, my flint and steel, my gloves, uh, my hat, that sort of stuff. All those nice little accessories that's good to have on you at any one time. Even some food, some rations, uh, that sort of thing. Now this is a larger bag. This one comes from Bergschneider. Um, and we've done some work with Bergschneider in the past, but I bought this one because I just think they're awesome. This is patterned off a Viking uh, bag. This is kind of like a purse or a haversack, but it's, you know, for you men out there, it's, it's, it's a satchel. Uh, it's very masculine. Uh, but this is a great way if you need to carry a little more stuff, some more items. Uh, it's a great item to have uh, with you, even if you just keep it in your tent and throw it on for longer journeys. Uh, that way you can fit all your stuff in that. Now, if you're really going on a longer journey and that sort of thing, um, having something like a bedroll, being able to carry uh, your blanket and that sort of stuff. The other great thing about a bedroll is you can actually take all this stuff, put it in here, roll it up, and then strap it on your back and carry it with you, just like that. It's very nifty. Now, this is our bushcraft bedroll strap that we sell on our Etsy store. Um, it's something we invented and we found has worked really well for carrying your bedroll. You can tighten it up, loosen it, that sort of stuff. It's a great, uh, less expensive alternative to a like a leather medieval backpack sort of stuff. Also, carrying a bedroll is a very common way of getting your stuff around for thousands and thousands of years. All right, some other little details, especially when it comes to traveling, are things like water bottles. Uh, so this is a water bottle that uh, was sent to us from Troll Car, Troll Car Armory. And um, there will be a link in our bio here. We also did a video just on medieval water sources. So uh, check these guys out. I really, these are handy. This is for me like a more um, short journey, carry around the camp sort of flask. Uh, this one from Grimfrost is a much larger, uh, more substantial, perhaps adventuring sort of, uh, sort of water carrier. Somebody maybe in your battle line can carry it and give water to everybody else to keep everybody hydrated. Also, you can have things like cups. Um, so this one's made out of horn. I'm not a huge fan of horn cups, but they can have their place. Um, also drinking horns, uh, pottery cups, that sort of stuff. Pottery cups are great for having around the camp. The major downside though is if you're carrying them in a bag or something like that, they could potentially get crushed and broken. So you just need to be a little more careful with them uh, that way. Now some other options, kind of you know, the last little add-ons, things like horns and trumpets. Um, so, you know, if your character is a hunter or part of a war band or something like that, people need to communicate over long distance and signal. A, a trumpet or a war horn is a great item to have. Uh, obviously, I made this one because Boromir has a war horn and he's awesome. Uh, but anyway, war horns, great, great item. Uh, last little, last little items, um, things like uh, pipes and that sort of stuff. Now, obviously pipes aren't medieval, but if you're doing fantasy sort of stuff, or later period stuff, um, pipes and smoking tobacco and that sort of stuff is another great little item that you can have tucked away somewhere, have it in your bag, in your haversack. Um, it's just another thing to add a little bit of detail. Plus, let's be honest, ever since we saw the Fellowship of the Ring, you wanted to be Strider sitting back there with your hood and you blow your pipe and the tobacco gets all red and your eyes glow and you look totally awesome. That really is the epitome. Basically, if you follow all of what we're saying, you can basically do that and be Aragorn. You know, as long as you live in the wilderness for like 40 years and learn to kill orcs on a regular basis. But bar that, get all this stuff and you can be Strider. All right, folks, the, the last little thing, we covered this. We have a video on belts, but belts. Um, it, you need them to be able to transport stuff, to carry your knives and your uh, all that sort of stuff. So I like, I regularly wear two to three belts. 
Um, they're just very handy. That way you can take off one, leave another, and having different sizes, different lengths. This is one that I made, and this is one that we got from Epic Armory. Uh, anyway, just some other great options for, you know, it's something to think about because you may have all this other stuff, but if you don't have some way to carry it, then you're not going to look awesome. And then you failed. So, anyway, thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, down in the comments, let us know what items you like to carry, maybe something we missed and other people could benefit from. Once again, like, comment, subscribe, and check back every week for new videos. Thanks a lot.